make sports talk great again with Kurt Schilling and Steve Dace. And greetings. Welcome to We Talk Sports here on The Blaze. I am Steve Dace. He is World Series champion, future Hall of Famer, Kurt Schilling. We put 25 minutes on the clock, get to as many of the day's sports topics as we possibly can. Are you ready to go, Mr. Schilling? I, I'm, I'm I'm ready to go. I got my new hat on. I got this last night at the Bruins game, which, by the way, was one of the best hockey games of the year. 18 straight games, they've got a point. Boston Police Department hat, though. So, yeah, I'm ready to go today. All right, well, you've got uh, some lofty ambitions to live up to there, then. Do not yeah. let down the Boston Police Department nope. by letting a community college flunky pull your pants down here on the Blaze talking <laughs> sports. Don't let that happen. All right? uh, it won't. Trust me, it won't. All right, let's get to it. Beginning right now, the college basketball scandal. Now, we were supposed to get to this yesterday, ran out of time. Yeah. And this is where oh, Providence stepped in and said, oh, no, wait a day. Knowing yeah, what was coming, beer. knowing <laughs> what was coming, oh my. So I, let me set the scene here. It was almost exactly a year ago. It was heading into the last weekend of the regular season. Mark Schleyball, your former con contemporary at ESPN, one of their big college sports investigative reporters, came out with the story that the FBI had Sean Miller, the Arizona coach, on wiretaps uh, with, with essentially making arrangements to not recruit as much as acquire talent. Okay. All right. Let's not use essentially and admittedly and possibly. Let's just say that. Well, I'm, I'm going to in the Miller case for, for a know, reason. Okay. I know. I know. Right, and so what? So yeah. game days comes on and Jay Billis has got Sean Miller fired and he's done, gone. A year later, he's still the coach. All right. Yeah. And 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 Mark and ESPN is acting like Mark Schleba never wrote that story. He yep. like I wonder if he got suspended because for like a month he was nowhere to be found which would be about a 30-day thing, right? And and then he just kind of reemerged several months later, and they've never referred to that story ever again, all right? Yeah. Well, Yahoo Sports has, uh, Pete Thamel and, uh, and Pat Forty, who used to be at ESPN, have really been all over the college basketball scandal. And, and, and they're getting anonymous sources, though, to give them actual evidence, right? They're not just, it's not Mark Schleybaugh saying, I talked to a source who said he heard Sean Miller on a wiretap. Oh, no. And yesterday, they dropped a neutron bomb uh, with the actual transcripts of wiretaps from the FBI with Will Wade, the LSU coach. Either this is a real, either this guy's just got blue chips and Nick Nolte just nailed yeah. And he was doing, you know, an improv on the phone because he's going to yeah. be in there. Almost like he knew people were listening. He was pranking them. Yes. And so it's almost like he was like getting ready to audition for the remake of Blue Chips. All right. Or dude was doing business and it's with Christian Dawkins, who has just been sentenced to six months in a federal penitentiary for wire fraud, conspiracy, uh, essentially, uh, you know, running a criminal racketeering racket uh, for these players and these shoe companies. Yep. And, and, and. And he's talking about smart. Uh, he, his point guard's last name is uh, Javante Smart is his point guard. And he's talking about, you know, the guy's turning down my offer because it was more geared towards his parents and, and his agent, his street agent and not him drop. I mean, F bombs all over the place. He's talking to Dawkins and he's frustrated about, uh, you know, why isn't this kid taking the deal? Because he's not a one and done. He's a two and three year player. And this is. You know, I, I sent this to you yesterday on a text, and I described it this way. Large obelisk hurling toward Earth. Yeah. Wide blast radius, extinction level event. Yeah, this because is here, really here's why. Let me, let me explain this from someone who works in the media, how this works. All right? Christian Dawkins, I'm confident. Someone on his side is the source of that wiretap because they're going to be subpoenaing. Will Wade's one of the coaches they've said they're going to subpoena. Yep. Because now that they've already been sentenced to prison in one trial, they're looking at another prison sentence in this other trial. And essentially, Christian Dawkins, we've been waiting for one of these assistant coaches or street agents yep. to say, I ain't the one. I I ain't, I am I'm not, not, I'm not looking at the underside of a bus with soap on a rope for the next 10 years. Ain't going to be me. Yep. Okay. Yep. We have found the Sammy the Bull Gravano because the specificity here, the coach that's on these wiretaps, Taps. This is a warning shot, in my view. They have much more. And there's a part of this that has not yet been discussed, which is who's Will Wade bidding against? See, that's the part we I, yeah. like I would I, we may never get, say, Roy Williams on a wiretap. 
But you know what you might get? You might get Will Wade or Sean Miller saying, oh, blankety blank, North Carolina offered that kid 150 grand. We can't. That's where the crosstalk starts coming yeah. in. Yeah. All right. It's going to happen. You're gonna, I, that, I think and that's this what is I think this, this is an extinction level event. Kurt. I agree. I think the NCAA basketball is looking. I don't know. How, I can't even fathom how far the spider web reaches and how deep it reaches because. The, the, what you just said was what I thought about when I first heard this story and have, have, ever since. There's a market. There's a market here. A, a, a market that m- coaches are playing against and with and bidding against and with. This is not one coach bidding against one team. This is, I mean, Arizona, LSU, you're talking about the cream of the crop. NCAA basketball and and. We found our first, I'm not going to jail for you guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't for a second believe he's going to be the last. And here's the other thing. There's no chance that this is the only wiretap done in the investigation. No way. No way. And how many coaches out. And here's the thing. You are out there denying it, knowing full well there's a, a, a transcript of an audio tape. Like, what are you doing? Why, 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 you know, this is, everybody's now holding their fingers, hoping they're going to be the one that didn't get caught. That's exactly right. And or, go ahead. Then there's going to be some that'll come forward. Well, I don't think they'll come forward. No one's going to come forward. No, no, no. you're right. But, but, but everybody, it, it, again, the crosstalk's going to be murderous. If you go back to the Ole Miss football scandal, that whole scandal uh, from uh, the payments, uh, the benefits to Laramie Tunzel, uh, to uh, the football coach and his frequent, frequenting of uh, escort services. Um, the, the, the people that subpoenaed the cell phone records that were involved in that were Mississippi State people. Okay. And, and it was other SEC coaches that turned in uh, Ole Miss for the way that they were procuring players. <laughs> what that tells you is there's a code. You know, in in yeah. any black market, I mean, you you come from the sport honor that's, among thieves. Yes, you come from a sport that's probably better known for its unwritten rules than the actual yeah. ones. Okay, right. you know, don't gaze too far at home plate at your home run. You know, don't yeah. don't slow down as you're round in second. You know, don't yeah. don't bunt to break up a no hitter. Right? I mean, you've watched guys nearly lose a frontal lobe over breaking these fr- these these unwritten rules. Right. Right? Right, right? Okay. What 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 happened in the old Miss football scandal is. They 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 didn't stay in your lane, bro. Okay, right. they they decided, <laughs> hey, the only way we're going to beat Alabama and Auburn at this is if we just totally up the ante and and you know we come over the top rope. All right, and and the other schools were like, you know what? There is an acceptable amount of of subterfuge that is permitted here, and you have you have greatly exceeded the luxury tax and the salary cap. You're yep. playing at a level that's going to get all the rest of us busted if this comes out. Yeah. So we're going to report you instead. That's yeah. exactly what I think it, is happening right now in college basketball. It's a greedy. It's a greedy thief. Mm-hmm. Like they, they and it, this always happens. So stuff grows to a point where it become. It, it's the it's the Tim Donahue story, right? They 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 couldn't leave well enough alone. And as soon as other people realize there's a there's an easier way, the path of least resistance is what we as human nature always seeks out. These people are looking at, okay, wait a minute, you know, I'm busting my butt to recruit uh, and do it above board. And these all the guys I'm competing against are not. I'll join the club. Yes. And 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 that's you know, it's it. it, I think we're going to see some death sentences on some programs because I I think this is well I mean the the if the audio tape didn't do it for you nothing will it boxes the NCAA in because now that this is out in the open it goes back to the last time we talked about this the schools that are are not willing to go to this level of of racketeering and the schools that aren't cheating. Because there's really three tiers of this among the major programs. There are there's the first tier of schools that are just you know flat out over you know running a black market here. Okay, then there's a group of schools that are willing to find so and so a job, 
maybe yeah. so and so a favorable tutor, you know, maybe bend their admission standards, you yep. know, those sorts of things. And then there's the but nowhere near what Will Wade is no, talking no, no, about no. on that tape. And then there's no. the third big kind of like Jim Tressel with cars and tattoos at Ohio State would be kind of like your second tier, right? Right. Uh, then you're then there's the other tier of the schools that won't go anywhere near any of this. Those other two tiers don't like each other, but they're going to unite against that third yeah. tier. And they're going to go yep. to the NCA and say, "Hey, you're hey, why did LSU, which hasn't been good at basketball really since Dale Brown left, all right, when they used to be a Final Four contender almost every year, and they haven't been good. They, they've been off and on, but not really consistently good for 20 years since Dale Brown and Shaquille O'Neal left LSU. How come all of a sudden they're in first place in the SEC ahead of Kentucky? So well, now me, we know me, why, and don't let them get away with that. Let me ask you this, the, 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 it, because it became during the steroid era and all the stuff that happened, uh, after I retired, it became clear to me that the best of the best of the best of my era were all cheaters. Mm-hmm. Every guy, for the most part, that was found out or you suspected, it turned out too good to be true. Okay. Are we to believe that there are three or four colleges doing it completely 100% above board and everybody else is cheating? We're, we're going to be told because he's so beloved by the media. And some that, of that, and, I, and some of that's deserved. That. You're basically you're pointing your finger at really one guy. Let's be honest. Right. You're basically saying, are we to believe the rest of these schools are involved in this black market to get these one and dones? But Mike Shashevsky and Duke is of such great uh, respect and rapport that he and doesn't you know have to get his hands is? dirty. The, the response is going to be. He doesn't need to, or he, it's going to be the like, same response. Well, Roger got, Clemens didn't need to. The Barry same Bonds didn't need to. Clemens yeah. and Bonds, which right. were, he's so good he doesn't have to. And then my question would be, okay, how did he get there? I mean, do you believe that Mike Krzyzewski's done, never broken an NCAA rule? And if you don't believe that, then what's your line? Right, because don't we do that moral equivalency thing? Mm-hmm. Well, he might have given the guy a, a job cutting his yard for a thousand a week, but he would never call in uh, an escort, or he, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, like. And it, again, it turned out to be every time somebody came out the, the you know, to, to, and in no, my Kirk's area. not just throwing that out. Louisville actually did this. Yes. My team lost the national championship game to a Louisville team that was, that was partially recruited by strippers and hoes, literally, yeah. literally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, the, and so, so yeah. And, and let's remember again, Steve, like the college football, it's all about money. These basketball programs are bringing in, for, in context of NCAA hoops, huge money. And How did the steroid, because I think your analogy of a steroid era, where again, amphetamines here, some creatine here, you know, okay, we hey, we all got to get paid. We're all trying to make a yep. living. But when you are literally a walking pharmacy and yeah. you're hitting more home runs past 35 than Willie Mays hit past 28, yeah, that's when it becomes outrageous, and someone's got right. to say something, so, right? So then let's let's use the equivalency. When you get the top five blue chips every single year, mm-hmm. come on, I, I get it. But are you telling me that there are blue star, five star, blue star recruits who are going to come and sit on your bench over going to play for somebody else and mm-hmm. being the number one guy on the roster? Mm-hmm. Now, okay, maybe you. I, and I'm not. You know, this is hard discussion to have without sounding like you're saying. Krzyzewski's cheating and Dean Smith cheat, but the fact of the matter is, how how did you get where you are? How did the steroid break? The, the, how did that break? What was where, where, where did the dam break on that? Right, because no, that I do think Conseco. this is similar to the college basketball scandal. Yeah, that's the Conseco's book. Mm-hmm. That's what forced Congress to sit up and baseball. So he up. was the Christian Dawkins in the story. In, in this case, it wasn't prison. It was that dude needed to make some money because he'd squandered everything, and this was his way back into the mainstream. 1994, Rick Helling stood up at a players' meeting and said, what are we going to do about the steroid guys? Mm-hmm. They're cheating, da-da-da. And most of the guys in that room, I, I'm sorry to say I didn't say anything, the other guys shouted him down and told him to shut the hell up. Mm. And, and and that was and that was what five six seven years before anybody in the you know the, the but I find it amazing that the same people that were talking about McGuire versus Sosa knowing something was going on are the same people that are trying to keep those guys out of Hall of Fame. Hmm. But yeah, it takes the Conseco. Let's go to uh, a fascinating story that uh, your former employer had yesterday, which was uh, it, it, this is this is advocacy journalism. All right, so masquerading as a feature. This is essentially advocating for pro sports leagues to openly, um, uh, you know, welcome stoners. 
And right. at the very least, if you're in a state that is that has legalized marijuana, then uh, you know players shouldn't be punished for going one toke over the line. And this comes out the same later in the day after this story came out at ESPN. David Irving, who's suspended right now uh, with the Dallas Cowboys, uh, it was on Instagram uh, uh, taking a you know a, a long uh, sip off the short straw there, so to speak, uh, dropping a blunt. Uh, live on Instagram saying I'm quitting football because he'd rather get high, basically. Right. So I, I find this fascinating too because ESPN always loses their poop when an athlete gets caught with a gun. So, yeah. like, I get if you're in a gun, if you're in a state that has you have to register a handgun and it's unregistered, okay. But you know, you have a universal Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Right. No, ESPN's not writing a story saying you know we gotta line up the uh, you know these uh, gun law gun regulations in these uh, sports with uh, the Second Amendment. But no, right. you gotta line up the chronic uh, with the uh, with with these laws. I, I want to have a conversation with you about uh, what 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 you would feel if a teammate. As an who was an open stoner, I by the way I grew up around this. My dad was a my stepdad who abused us was a was a pot dealer. I mean I went on pot wow. runs. All right, so I I and I was around stoners all throughout college. That's how I got to you know know a lot of the good. That's how I got to be a Grateful Dead fan, uh, and. I, I've never in my life, being around this culture my entire life, I have never seen this spur anyone on to greater motivation right. uh, and achievement. Okay? Yeah. So your view of this, just purely if this was one of your teammates. All right. So I, I need to be forthright and honest about this. And I know this is going to make me like uh, a 21-year-old virgin, I guess. I've never done it. Mm -hmm. now, I, I grew up in a house of smokers. Uh, my, I killed Neither my have I, by the way. I grew up around it right. so much. I hated it so much. That's why I never that's did it. That's exactly so, right. I, I, I grew up never, in a family of smokers. My stepdad was a pothead. Yeah. Never experimented. None of it. Yep. Um, because smoking was so disgusting to me, mm -hmm. first off. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, I never had a desire. I was always afraid of, of something happening, but I never had the desire. I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to say I got high on life, but the fact of the matter was I was always entertained. <laughs> right? I was always... Engaged. I and, loved and hanging out with stoners because I could get them to do all kinds of dumb things and that I made did, me laugh. You know what? Yeah. In high school, that's who I hung out with yeah. because they were the only honest people in campus. <laughs> they, I didn't hang out with the the you know the social circles and the popular kids because they were all jerks. I hung around with the kids who got stoned all the time because they didn't give a crap who you were. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've also watched this drug kill people. I this is, I have no doubt in my mind that this is a gateway drug. Uh, and science has proven it to be a gateway drug. Not to mention, uh, if you go back and look at the states that are legalizing, Colorado is warning everybody uh, uh, about doing this because people that get stoned are probably some of the most lazy, uh, uh, irresponsible human beings on the planet. And I get it. It's legal. You can do it. And that's fine. Blah, blah, blah. But uh, this is it, is this not that what we've talked about, the liberal culture spilling into sports in ways that I never could have imagined? Um I don't know. I, I guess they're trying to act like they don't. They're not like going to miss. Like if you want to, you know, cannabis has other uses other than just getting stoned, right? Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing: the medicinal stuff. Yeah. I'm not a doctor, so if a doctor says that this can help a, a cancer, that's where I was going to go. Like cannabis right. oil, for example. Okay. Right. So, like, if a cannabis oil, if if you don't want players taking human growth hormone and things of that nature, and if a cannabis oil is a is a natural healer, pain reliever, things yep. of that nature, anti-inflammatory, yep. I don't know that we, you know there's an issue with that. But we're talking about really stoner culture here is really what we're right. talking about. Right. No, and like I said, I, I, I've watched people... I mean, David uh, Irving is literally the same day they're running this story, a promise... How many first? How many young men get a chance to be a millionaire in America anyway right, by 25? Right, right. How many black young men get a chance to be a right. millionaire anyway by 25? And so the same day, the irony of ESPN, and when I sent you this rundown, the David Irving thing hadn't come out yet, okay? Yeah. But the again, this is like providential timing. So front page of ESPN, uh, let's all go Snoop Dogg, all throughout pro sports, and later in the day, here's a young black athlete who says, you know what? I would rather sit around and yeah. smoke blunts than make millions of dollars in the NFL. If that's not you a repudiation what? of what ESPN was trying to do, I don't know what is. And like I said, I've seen it personally ruin and lives and kill people in the sense that it's a it's a gateway drug. There's the, the, And I, there's just about any scientist on the planet will tell you that very thing. Um, it's not addictive. Well, anything is addictive, depending on your personality. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you look at m most people that end up uh, overdosing on opioids. 
uh, and heroin and fentanyl and all the other stuff. Uh, there's a there's a history there uh, that usually doesn't start with 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 Vicodin. Um, but it, it's a gateway drug. And, you know, like I said, the medicinal part of it. Awesome. If it helps PTSD, if it helps uh, football guys with chronic injuries, blah, blah, all of that stuff. I'm all for it. But legalizing it is just, I think it's one of the most irresponsible things we could have done. And everybody says, uh, you know, oh, what about liquor and alcohol? I agree. I mean, I, I think the laws around those things are too loose as, as it is. But this is this is just, and but this is who ESPN has become. No I don't understand me. this idea of, since we're already permitting things that are bad for people, let's permit more of them. That's exactly right. Bad, hey, what is zero times zero? Zero. What is bad times bad? Right. How do I multiply bad? My mama raised me two wrongs don't make a right, right? Right. Okay. That's why when my why my mama was chain smoking as a nurse, she was telling me this is terrible for you. I see all the X-rays. Don't do this because <laughs> yeah, she didn't yeah. want me to follow in her footsteps. Right. Right. right? right. You know, should should my by ESPN's uh, logic, my mom should have said, you know what, man, you should do exactly to yourself what I'm doing to me. I, I don't I don't understand this thing. Well, we let these people do bad stuff, so let's do all kinds of other bad stuff instead. That makes absolutely it's like you've never been a parent it's like right. one of your children get, gets away with something and your if your other kid comes to you and says well i should get away with it too are you going to say yeah you know yeah you're right you should that's I'm, why no, being a fourth child that's why being a fourth child sucks <laughs> you got away with nothing <laughs> right you get away you because the other three will rat you out plus the parents are watching you, you right can juggle knives as a newborn when you're the fourth <laughs> child but you can't be in past out past 9 8 p.m on school night <laughs> Hey, LeBron James back in the news this week. He surpassed Michael Jordan uh, for fourth on the all-time scoring list in the NBA. Uh, the three K, Triple K now uh, are Kobe Bryant, Carl Malone, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's the next three names, or the final three names on the list. Uh, he said that toppling his airness, which of course was his childhood idol, uh, ranks right up there uh, with winning some of the team titles that he's won. I've seen him take some heat for this, and, I'm, and you know we've given him, uh, we've flung some uh, some some turds in the punch bowl at him for some of his recent behavior, but I kind of think he's getting a bad rap here and i want because i want to go to your perspective on this because you come from a sport where the championing of individual achievement ranks right up there for a yeah. lot of fans go to ballparks when your team's not any good because hey i remember i remember being my senior year in high school was the summer cecil fielder hit the 50 home runs and no one had done it since george foster and that was kind of we're, we're kind of getting the end of the sparky yep. anderson era and the tigers were barely 500 but we watched every freaking game just because we wanted to see cecil fielder or break that mark, right? So is, is this a case now where because of some of his other past antics, maybe LeBron's getting a bad rap here? There's nothing wrong with being no, uh, proud of surpassing hyper, your everybody's idol. Everybody's hypersensitive to mm -hmm. him. Um, but let me just tell you, he 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 goes so far beyond. There's a, I, there's a little of uh, the older A-Rod in him. Like, he puts way too much effort into trying to be something that he already is. Hmm. Right. I mean, it, it, that was always the thing about certain baseball players was they would be in a group of people and and they would be overexerting themselves to be a part of the gang. And they would be the most f famous person in the group. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, relax. Chill out, dude. You're... I got to tell you, though, the one part of this that made me cringe. Did you see the picture of him supposedly crying with I his did. head in the towel? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Like, in my mind, he's in the towel going, oh, my God, I'm the greatest ever, and these people just love – this is all – you know, he's not actually crying. See, he's I kind like, of felt so like – I felt like a guy that maxed out, like, you know, uh, in, in in high school in sports. I I don't understand this. That's why I want to know what you thought, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, – Because it, I'd be but, crying if I beat Michael Jordan for all-time points, too. But, you know, I've, right. I've never been an athlete at you guys' level, so I don't right. know the but, way but you're right, wired. It's also been something he's known is going to happen for quite a while. Right. You know, so he, he, and you always – I remember – uh, with the 3,000 strikeouts coming up, I, I remember thinking about what the moment would be like. Turned out it sucked because I got my butt kicked in the game, but I did punch out a guy that was fun to strike out. Um, but you're talking about uh, uh, achievements that I can't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, greatness at a level I can't understand. And so. Because we're kind of at, at 4,000 strikeouts, is the equivalent in your sport of where he's at right now. That's basically. exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. And, and like I said, he. he he is all about everything he does. He embellishes, and he doesn't have to. People will listen to him tell stories without the the the, the fake falls on the court, right? Without all the other stuff, like, like the, the college initiative that he announced at the University of yeah. Akron last year. What is great 
Just, the fact that he used his celebrity to get all these public institutions to come together and, that, yeah, and offer right. these scholarships, that's a great story unto itself. That, but then they right. had to blow way out of proportion what his financial stake in it was. What he was giving yeah. was nothing compared to what was originally reported. Like the right. truth is just not good enough for him sometimes. Right, that's you know? exactly right. And, 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 and like I said before, I, 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 you have to understand the context with which I criticize LeBron James. I, I'm, 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 I'm skipping the fact that he's he's had a, a very positive influence on people's lives. He's mm -hmm. stayed out of jail. He hasn't done dumb stuff that professional athletes do from a, from a legal perspective, which which makes him a different kind of dislike, right? It's not like Pac Man Jones. It, it's 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 like you know what? It, it's like A Rod again. Yeah. It just it, it, and but I think he, A Rod has changed, and I think LeBron. He, this is what happens when you don't have people honest. This is what happens when you don't have honest friends friend, because I can tell you this, if I was in that circle, I'd be going, what did you just say? Right. You it, you know, they don't have those people in that circle. Yeah. Because when he comes out and talks about being the greatest ever, I'm sitting there going, okay, dude, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. why, why on earth would you, you, we all know it. You don't need to say it. It's that he wants to be respected and he wants to be loved. The, and I would argue that guys in that position want love more than they want respect mm. because I he'll get his respect on the court. Dude, you want to embarrass me? I'll show you what embarrassing is. I think we forget sometimes as fans because, you know, I made this point too about, you know, uh, the NFL players who want to kneel. Um, but then they don't want to let you have the, you, you're not, if you, if you disagree with them, like they want right, this to be right. a one-sided conversation. No, and well, I, think, that's, yeah. I think we forget as fans, cause we see these men that are these 27 year old men that are in American Ninja warrior, Greek God conditioning. And we have right. these mythological notions of them. And we forget that outside of that external or inside of that external shell is just another millennial trying to make his way in the world. That, that's something. a people pleaser. The most important thing to remember is most of them never have to grow up. Hmm. The things I was doing when I was 37 years old in the locker room as pranks w were things that I did when I was 14. Like, right. because everybody's the same. Right. You're in a circle. You don't, and no one holds you accountable many times for the, that's why so many things, if the locker room ever was wiretapped, oh, well, you escaped. I was actually going to call an audible and ambush you here at the end because Antonio Brown looks like he is going to screw the Steelers all the way to the last. He was going to yeah. get traded last night because the Steelers were like, you know, hey, man, screw you. We're sending you to Buffalo. All right. Yep. And Drew Rosenhaus and his agent came into Buffalo and were like, hey, you can't. We want a deal. And Buffalo's like, well, we're not paying that compensation. And so right. now the Steelers have already let it be known. They have to get rid of him. Free Now, free agency's next week. He's due a roster, massive roster bonus next week he's run his mouth that he's made himself toxic to a lot of uh, a well, lot of you know NFL uh, franchises you know what's gonna are happen are they gonna have to cut him no you know what they're gonna do they're gonna give they're gonna trade him for a fourth round pick to a place that they hope and pray he hates i told you unless the raiders said we couldn't we just don't want to have three first round picks come to free agency in the yeah. same year I just didn't so we'll think give one of those picks to harder. pittsburgh they weren't gonna yeah. get a first round pick for him yep. Right. Now is the team that trades for him get is they responsible for his roster bonus? Yeah, if he's on the okay. if he's on the roster okay. next week, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Have a great weekend. Hey, you too, buddy. Take care.